Last week, Marvel announced the films that they will be making in Phase 3 of Marvel's Cinematic Universe, and it had the internet ablaze. I have fellow Washington, D.C. area movie critic Jeffrey K. Lowes on the line to talk about what the rollout means. Jeffrey, welcome to the show. Thank you much, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> My pleasure. Um, so, uh, there's no question, Marvel is killing it when it comes to the Cinematic Universe they are and have created. Tell us about their latest announcement. All right, so basically Warner Brothers and DC Comics announced their big slate of 10 movies that are going to come out uh, through 2020 in an investors stakeholders meeting two weeks ago. So Marvel decided, you know, we've got a whole bunch of movies on our end, and this is kind of the big announcement that a lot of people were expecting to come out of San Diego Comic-Con, but uh, Kevin Feige, the Hey, Guru, everything Marvel Studios said that they had to clear up a few logistics, so they made this big announcement, and they had a and they had a much smarter, more fan-friendly kind of rollout. They made it a big event, had it trending on Twitter, and, and they just kind of announced everything to get people really excited about what they've got coming in the next 10 years. Or, I'm sorry, just uh, until 2019. So let me see if I can go through the, the big announcements here. So first up, they announced Doctor Strange, which was the one film that a lot of people were kind of expecting to be announced. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is rumored to be the title character in that. Uh, that was not confirmed. That was pretty much the only thing that we didn't get definitively from that. Right. We've also got Captain America 3, which will be uh, subtitled Civil War, and that's going to pit... Uh, Captain America, Chris Evans, and Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man against each other. And that's based off of a pretty popular comic book uh, limited series, which had Cap and Iron Man on opposite sides of superhero registration. And Kevin Feige said this is not going to be an exact translation of the comic book storyline, but we're going to start to see some plot threads of that develop in next year's The Avengers Age of Ultron. So kind of be on the lookout for some foreshadowing on that end. Then uh, they also announced Inhumans, which is another teen group, and Inhumans' basic deal is they're uh, an alien race who get superpowers when they get exposed to a mist, and they step into it and they kind of figure out what their powers are going to be. They're an alien group, and we've kind of seen some hints of them in the TV show Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, there's a blue alien that showed up there that may have some connection to Inhumans. So keep watching the show, and, and that will definitely tie in with Inhumans. Next up, we've got uh, Captain Marvel, and that's uh, test fighter pilot Carol Danvers. She is basically, a, she also ties into the Inhumans and the Kree. And she's a superpower character who travels in outer space and fights alongside the Avengers. And she's a pretty decent character and one that a lot of fans have been anticipating getting some news on. And uh, the two biggest announcements for me were the Black Panther film. And they've already announced that Chadwick Boseman is going to be starring as the Black Panther. That's coming out in November 2017. And the other big announcement was that we're getting two Avenger films. Uh, the first one is, or it's a two-part film. It's the Avengers Infinity War. And that's basically going to tie into everything we've seen so far since the Avengers. Uh, a lot of people didn't know who that character was, who was laughing, or who was smiling at the end of the post credit scene. That guy was Thanos that you've seen in Guardians of the Galaxy this year. Now we're going to see him come toe-to-toe -to -toe against the Avengers in a movie too big to be contained in one <laughs> right? where the Avengers facing off against Thanos. And that could be a, a multi-character storyline where we get the Guardians of the Galaxy, we get all the other characters they've introduced, and maybe even a few more if some rumors come to pass. But that's going to be the big, uh, the big major blockbuster for 2018 and 2019. So... It's a lot to be excited about, and it's got fans buzzing and really excited and looking forward to everything that Marvel's got coming up in the next few years. 
Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I, as I had told you, um, uh, you know, when you made the post uh, on, on your website, you know, can you imagine in 20 years when you sit down and you actually do, uh, you know, a Marvel Cinematic Universe marathon, just like having it all come together? It's going to be incredible. Yeah, it's going to be a really fun marathon. You're probably going to need a few days, but maybe you need to take a whole a week off. <laughs> they've done such a great job of connecting everything. Back when Nick Fury popped into Tony Stark's living room and started this whole Avengers train that we've been riding on, you know, culminating in 2012, Hit, which is the third highest grossing film of all time, uh, Phase 2 with Iron Man 3, Captain America the Winter Soldier, Thor the Dark World, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, and we're almost done with Phase 2 now. That's going to wrap up with the Avengers Age of Ultron. We saw the trailer for that, and that got people really excited and remembered, reminded everybody, hey, we've got a big Avengers movie coming out next year. And, you know, so it's, it's a lot to be excited about for Marvel films. And, yeah. you know, fans of comic book movies in general are really stoked about them. Yeah, definitely. And uh, if you could, real quickly, what's the significance of the Black Panther and Captain Marvel movie? So basically, we have not seen a black superhero leading in a serious uh, superhero comic book movie since Blade. And that last film came out in 2004, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, that was Blade Trinity. And that was the last, and that was Wesley Snipes back when he was a major star. And it's been a long time since there's been a black hero designing a film. We've had uh, Don Cheadle's War Machine slash Iron Patriot in the last two Iron Man films. We've had Anthony Mackie and Captain America the Winter Soldier and Nick Fury um, by Samuel L. Jackson in the Avengers movies, but there hasn't been a, a dedicated film where the main character was a black guy. And the Black Panther is the first black superhero in mainstream comics, and he's a guy who a lot of Avenger fans have been clamoring to see him in the films since the first film. And so to have basically the Marvel Comics equivalent of Batman showing up in this universe is something that a lot of people are excited about. And with Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel, there hasn't been a superhero uh, film with a female lead since Jennifer Garner's Elektra. And that really bombed. And, and as few black superhero films we've seen, they're even less headlined by a female superhero. So this is pretty exciting. And Captain Marvel has been the newest character that Marvel Comics have really been pushing and really kind of backing and trying to get fans excited about her. And some of this is because of the rumored take of Mabel get her headline in film. Mm. Also significant was that they're stealing the thunder from DC Comics. DC had planned to have the Cyborg movie, but that's not coming out to like the last part of their rollout in 2020. So with Black Panther getting to the screen in his own film in 2017, he beats Cyborg in will, you know, because he's got that Marvel Studios backing. He's going to be the one that Cyborg's matched up against. And just for my own personal preference, Cyborg is not going to match up very well against Black Panther. <laughs> Pretty exciting. And, and in 2016, we're going to see our first appearance of Bozeman as Black Panther in Civil War. So we get a little teaser in uh, 2016, and then we get his own solo film in 2017. Yeah. Well, uh, Jeffrey, thanks for um, breaking that down for us. Uh, on a side note, uh, I know that you and I are both uh, geeks about... Um, <laughs> the Furious 7 film that's about to come out. Um, have yeah, you caught the trailer? Wait. Cannot wait. It's, it's with everything that I ever wanted in a Fast and Furious trailer, and, and I didn't even realize it. It was awesome. We had guys flying off cars, jumping out of planes and cars, parachuting to the ground. It was awesome. And <laughs> 2015 literally could be the greatest movie year of all time. We've got so much stuff coming, and that is definitely one of my top three most anticipated films for next year. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be huge. And <laughs> Most definitely. I've been I've been a fan of the franchise since day one. You know, it did dip off a little bit, but, um, you know, uh, I definitely am excited to uh, see Furious 7, and especially, um, you know, with 
uh, the untimely loss of Paul Walker. I just want to see how they really honor him with this last film. Um, but Jeffrey, thanks for coming on the show, man. We really appreciate uh, you breaking that down for us. Let people know how they can find you. You can find me on wildsmoviefiles.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at wildsmoviefiles. You can reach me at wildsmoviefiles at gmail.com. Awesome. Well, again, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for giving us that breakdown. No problem, man. Thanks again. All right. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.